So Chimera got a heavy boost in Rota, and I'm excited to show you all just what it's capable of. Hey guys, Otaku here, back with another competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and today we're going to be talking about Fiendsmith Chimera as a Mina. So it has been by no means a long time since I've talked about Chimera, it's been about two weeks, but since the last time I went into a full in-depth explanation on how to play Chimera, the lines have, for the most part, significantly changed. So in this video, we're going to be going over the upcoming build, what it's going to be looking like, and going over the inner mechanics of the deck, but also just going over how to play around certain hand traps or play into certain hand traps. So in a sense, it's just going to be a bit of a refresher from the first Chimera video I made on the channel about two or three months ago. All right, so here's the build. So there are some things that I have tweaked, mainly ratios, and I do want to give a shout out to Din Kabui, who recently got the top 32, I think, with Chimera at the most recent YCS as of recording this video. And I looked at his build and he made some very valid points. To start, he talked about cutting Tau, something I talked about in a most recent video as well. And you all ridiculed me for that. You said I was crazy for that. And then he cuts it. And sure enough, y'all praised him for that. Tau is a brick in the deck. He's not really needed in the deck anymore. You don't really even need him for the OTK on the Illusion Beast. The card doesn't feel good to open, it doesn't really ever feel good to search, and it doesn't really ever feel good to dump either off of the Burfamet effect. But also on top of that, we are running the Big Wing Burfamet at 1. We don't want to open this card. Not to mention we do have another searchable option off of Gazelle, which is the level 5 Fiend Evil Hero Sinister Necrom. But also we can revive the Burfamet from the Graveyard via the Muckraker, so we are not particularly in need of two of this. We can also recycle it back off of sequence. So again, we don't need two of this in the deck. As for the rest of the deck, we are still running three Cornfield Kotal. We are running three Gazelle. I have cut Sword Knight back down to two because it conflicts with the normal summon. You can run it at three if you want. I just personally decide it's not needed. We have three of the Nightmare Apprentice. And then as for the remaining monsters, we are still running one of the Diabells. We're running three of the Diabell Star, the Black Witch, because we do want to see the deception as much as possible because it does get us to our as amina cards we are running the diabolica the dragonique general this card's insane uh if anyone has looked at dinkabui's deck list he was running this at the most recent ycs if you dump this card off of like the burfamet effect you can add engraver back to your hand and like search track to track to get you more gas or you can use it to get like burfamet back to your hand if you haven't used his uh, fusion summon effect and you just dumped him like this card is actually like really crazy if you apply its effects properly we are running of course the hero engine we're running evil hero dusted gold and sinister necron we did cut the dark fusion i didn't find the need for it because we're not trying to like fuse as often this deck we're trying to get a bunch of bodies on board and we're only really fusing like twice with the chimera fusion so we don't really need to fuse into a bunch of other stuff so it's no longer really needed to run the Dark Fusion. We're still running the Fiendsmith Engine, of course, with Fabled Lurie, the two Fiendsmith Engraver. We are running one of Lacrima, the Scarlet Sorrow now, um, mainly because she just helps us get more Light Fiends in the graveyard, which is going to help us make the Desiree, which I'm finally running in Fiendsmith Chimera. As for the spells, we are running one of Azamina Debtors, as it's going to be called in the TCG. Three of Book of Eclipse, one called by the grave, three Chimera Fusion, three Dark Ruler No More, one Tract, one Foolish Burial, three Droplet, one Sacred Azamina, one Deception, three Talents, and three Wanted. So the reason on some of these ratios. To start, we are running Book of Eclipse, the Forbidden Droplet, and Dark Ruler No More. We're playing more of a Board Breaker style deck, that's why we also have Talents in here. Uh, Droplet is good going first or second, helps us crack boards, or it just has, helps us set up a stronger end board. Same goes for Book of Eclipse. You could run Moon if you want. I think Eclipse is just a lot better for cracking specific boards like you Bell. Um, it also just forces certain cards to use their effects to kind of get a one-for-one -one trade off of it. Um, it could also just bait out an Ash Blossom. So it really just depends. Dark Ruler can just be discarded. We have a lot of cards in the deck now that are doing a lot of discarding, so we need kind of dead cards in our hand at times so that's why you know with black witch we can send it off with the nightmare apprentice we can send it off if we need to discard off of muckraker we can send it off it really just depends or if we're going second again this card's nuts fiendsmith tract again it's just a one of we use it to do fiendsmith shit foolish burial is pretty nuts foolish burial by itself is fiendsmith combo this can get us to turbo out caesar if we can't get to the asamina cards 
Um, it can also just dump the Diabolica so that we can apply more stuff. It can help us get a missing piece from the Chimera end board, like the Kotal or the Mirror Sword Knight into the graveyard. It can dump out Burfamet so we can revive it off of Muckraker. Foolish has a lot of application in this deck. And then the big one, Deception of the Sinful Spoils. A lot of people are probably wondering why am I running this at one? Because quite frankly, I'm probably only going to be able to afford one. This card is projected to be about $60, $70 once it is no longer on pre-lease. And because of that, I'm not looking to run three of it. That's why I'm running three Witch and three Wanted to hopefully see it as much as possible. The deck does have a lot of draw power, so I can maybe get to Witch or Wanted later in the combo. And then hopefully still end on some sort of Azamina end board. But unfortunately, I'm just not going to be able to run three. As for the extra, we are running one of the Azamina Rusio Lago. Uh, this is not summoned as often. It's usually when we need an illusion in rotation and we just can't get to it. But also, it does let us make it so we can maybe summon the Omnigate on our opponent's turn instead of our own turn. I usually only summon this off of the Sinful Spoils engine if I have already summoned out Caesar, so that way I'm under the protection of not getting hit with Nibiru. And then we can, again, still summon out the Silvera on our opponent's turn. We are still running the Azamina Soul, but I did cut the level 8. I think the level 8 is just too expensive for what it ends up being the card requires a illusion monster plus a level six fiend which is very specific yes we do have level six fiends in the deck like burfamet or engraver but it just didn't feel worth it for an end board piece whereas as the soul is just summon it and send a card to the graveyard pretty simple and it only needs an illusion and feed something we end on quite often all three of these are one ofs because they are recyclable the sacred azamina can put them back into the extra deck so it's not like a big deal but also we can just kind of fuse them back into the extra deck off of sequence because they're all illusions so we can use them as material to make burfamet which we are still running two of because again it is a it is the most flexible card in the extra deck still only one of the chimera the illusion beast and one of the phantom beast again phantom beast we are getting its graveyard effect probably twice in the same duel but we are getting its hand rip effect only off once usually so it's not like super necessary we are finally running the fiendsmith desiree this is something a lot of people keep trying to tell me to run and up until this recent build where lacrima is available it just didn't feel worth it to end on however now that lacrima is in the deck she does allow us to make this a lot easier but also because we have the azamina cards we don't feel like the fiendsmith engine has to be making the caesar if i can end on the omni negate before nibiru then i can go for desiree and have essentially two omni negates still only one guardian chimera i just cannot ever find myself running two of this because if i'm running two, if i'm summoning the second one of this then i probably should have already won the duel one necroquip princess because this allows us to make it so tracked is Fiendsmith combo by itself without an extra body. One Chaos Angel just to further help break boards. We have a thousand different ways to make this. One of the Caesar because, you know, Nibiru is a card. The Bistials are a card. Bistials are a threat to this deck heavily because if they try to banish the Diabells or if they try to banish one of the Fiendsmith pieces, we kind of need to stop them from doing that. One of the Requiem and Sequence because they're recyclable and also Fiendsmith. And then one of the Muckraker. As for like honorable mentions, cards that you could run in the main deck or in the side deck is Bistials. Bistials are going to be very good in the upcoming format still because we can banish away the IP from the Snake Eye end board or we can banish away the Fiendsmith cards as long as they don't have Lacrima or you don't hit the wrong card or they don't have Caesar already on board. So the Bistials are still good. They're bodies, they're extenders to an extent. And they help break boards like Druus Worm or even Baldrake. Wangu, you can run it in the main or the side. This card just kind of makes you bell cripple. It, they can't really play through this unless they have Imperm or Droplet to negate it. The Mulcharmy Fool Ross. If you have $600 to play the playset of this card, I encourage you to play it. I, however, am a broke bitch. I will not be playing this card because I will not be able to afford it. If I play this card, I pulled it, which is severely unlikely because my pull rates are trash we of course can run some hand traps like nibiru or droll nibiru helps essentially break boards it's like a pseudo board breaker in a sense you can run droll because it makes boards weaker to be further breakable make it easier to break them but also they don't have follow-up if you can't break their their board but you can like break half the board 
So you can play some hand traps, just like I wouldn't recommend playing a lot. The problem with Chimera and even like Branded is they are fusion decks. Fusion decks struggle to play hand traps simply because they are resource dependent. They need monsters to make monsters. This is the reason why most fusion materials in fusion decks essentially replace themselves when they're used as fusion materials or when they summon themselves because you need to keep the resource loop going. And the issue with that is if you have hand traps, most of the hand traps either don't meet the credentials to make the fusion monster, or you're just eating away cards that could just have been further gas. Then of course we still have board breakers like Harpy's Feather Duster and Lightning Storm. You can run Regeki as well if you want to, if you feel like you need to. And then Metal Tronus. I think this card's gonna be crazy in the Azamina format. Uh, this card will just help you break like Azamina boards, especially in this deck where you're already running Azamina cards. You just activate Metal Tronus, target the Silvera, summon the Silvera, banish both of them. Sure, you're out of your Silvera, but you know, you got rid of their Omni Negate. The issue is that it does target, so you can't just target like a opponent's Desiree because it's untargetable. But the perks is, is that that monster can't respond, so they can't Omni Negate your Metal Tronus with Silvera. If they have Desiree, they can negate the Metal Tronus then, but then you expend their Desiree. But that's it for the build. Let's go ahead and jump on over to a handful of combos on how to play through certain hand traps or play into certain hand traps. All right, so the first combo we're going to be looking at is probably the big one, and that is Draw and Lockbird. So Chimera Fiendsmith was a deck that could very well play under Draw and Lockbird under the right conditions, and Azamina is no different. However, unlike the Fiendsmith Chimera, there are now three engines conflicting for the add slot, so you have to prioritize what is going to get you the best ideal end board for most likely a Draw and Lockbird. And I don't think that has entirely changed. I think this deck is very capable of playing under Draw and Lockbird as long as you have Chimera Fusion in the rotation. So here we have a random hand. However, it's a good hand for this example because we have Engraver, Gazelle, and Diabellstar. All three of these cards are going to conflict for the first add effect because yes, Diabellstar herself doesn't add, but the Deception will, meaning that you are going to have to prioritize what you want to add first on the off chance that they have Droll Lockbird. And I always think that just turboing to the Chimera Fusion as quick as possible is the best way to do it because that way you have Chimera Fusion and you can at least fuse twice and get resources into the graveyard that you need into the graveyard. So to start, we are just going to normal summon the Gazelle, use Gazelle effect, add the Chimera Fusion. This is where our opponent activates Droll and Lockbird and for the rest of this combo they only had draw and lockbird they don't have any other hand traps so from this point we can't add any more cards to our hand for the rest of this turn so we now have to kind of map out where we want our end board to end up and since we can't get to the azmina cards because diabelle star yes can still set the deception she cannot get to the Azamina cards because Deception has to add. So we are going to activate the Chimera Fusion here. We are going to fuse away the Gazelle and the Engraver to make the Chimera King of Phantom Beasts. We're going to want to make Chimera here because we want to utilize the fact that Gazelle is a beast and Chimera needs specifically a beast. And if we use Gazelle too early, then we're not going to be able to get to Chimera. And I think if we're going to get Droll and Lockbird, we need to punish our opponent and rip another card out of their hand on end phase. So on resolution of Chimera Fusion, we are going to use Chimera's effect to rip a card on end phase, but then we will, on resolution of that, add the Chimera Fusion back to our hand. From here, we're just going to fire the Chimera Fusion again, fusing away the Cornfield Codal and the Chimera to make Burfamet. And Burfamet is the only thing that can activate here, so we will use his effect, dump these Sinister Necrom, so that way we can get some sort of Fiendsmith engine going here. We will then use Necrom Effect, summon out the Adusted Gold, and then from here it is just simple Fiendsmith plays. We will link one into the Requiem Requiem Effect, and instead of summoning out Engraver, we will be summoning out Lacrima. We will use Lacrima's Effect to dump a Fiendsmith card from deck to grave. We will dump out another Engraver, and then we will use Requiem Effect to equip itself to the Lacrima. We will Contact Fuse into the Necro Quip. And then we will use the Engraver effect, putting back the Requiem for cost to summon out the Engraver. You could end on Caesar here. If you know the matchup you're going against, and if you think Caesar is a powerhouse here, then go for Caesar here. In fact, if you are under Droll and you think your opponent might have Nib, you're probably going to want to go Caesar here if you haven't already been hit with Nib as is. We'll link to away the Engraver and the Necroquip Princess to make Sequence. We'll go Sequence effect, fusing away the Engraver, the Lacrima and the gold back into the deck to make the Desiree. We'll then send away the sequence off of the Black Witch effect, 
to summon herself, use her effect just to set the deception. There's no real reason not to. And then we will activate sequence effect, equipping itself to the Desiree, making himself untargetable, but also allowing him to negate up to two cards on your opponent's turn in the singular chain. From here, we'll just set the Book of Eclipse. This end board isn't like the most ideal. The perks here is that we have Birth Met on board, meaning that the Codal Engrave is live, so our opponent cannot target us with card effects. But on top of that, we still have the Desiree being able to essentially be an Omni Negate to most cards. But then also, Desiree does have the ability that when it's sent to Graveyard, he can send a card to the Graveyard. And we have, of course, the Book of Eclipse, which in certain decks, they kind of just fold to Eclipse. If you use a well-timed Book of Eclipse and your opponent cannot negate it, or dodge it, or play after it, they just pass. So again, this isn't like the most ideal end board, but under Droll and Lockbird, this is still a pretty considerable end board. All right, so the next two hand traps we're gonna be playing around, and the reason I'm saying two is because one of these to play around is super simple, whereas the other one is a little more complicated, but we're gonna be playing around target negation like Imperm and Valor, slash Mourner, I guess, and also Nibiru in this combo. Target negation is super easy because our fusion spell, Chimera Fusion, is a quick play, but we also do play Book of Eclipse, so we can also dodge it that way. So for this hand, we are going to actually start off by activating Wanted in the draw phase, so that way we can play around the draw and lockbird as best as we want to, even though in this example there is no draw and lockbird. So we will activate Wanted, add the Witch in draw phase. Simple as that. We'll then move to main phase, activate the Gazelle, Gazelle effect, and this is where our opponents can hit us with Valor or Imperm. Because we have Chimera Fusion, or I guess even possibly Book of Eclipse, we could dodge it here. So we will activate the Chimera Fusion as Chain 3 to fuse away the Gazelle and the Sinister Necrom in our hand to make Chimera King of the Phantom Beasts. And then we will resolve the gazelle by adding another chimera fusion the reason we add chimera fusion here is because we don't need the burfamet in rotation at this exact moment but also kotal will get us to the burfamet so we do not need it and it also helps just have an extra chimera fusion in rotation so on resolution of this whole chain we will go chain one gazelle chain two chimera for the end phase rip because at this point we've been hand trapped we're going to punish off of the gazelle we are just going to add the nightmare apprentice because what other illusion monster would we be adding here one thing i do want to note here is that we will not get to a way to play around nibiru before summon five in fact we are already on summon two and we are nowhere close to a caesar or an azamina silvera but as I mentioned in my last Chimera video where I went over the combos and playing around Nibiru, the goal is that if you can't get to one of those Nibiru counters as quick as possible, then the goal is, is to keep an idea of what is in your graveyard, what is in your hand, so that way you can crack back if you do get hit with Nibiru. So at this point, we are going to try and rush out the Fiendsmith engine so we can get to Caesar. So we're going to activate the Necron Banish for cost, two special summon out the Adusted Gold, summon number three, incoming summon number four for the Link 1, Requiem, Effect of Requiem, summon out the Lacrima, and that is summon number five. So if they want to Nibiru me here, they will have to do it as chain two, which at this point we will have an engraver engrave. We will go the Lacrima effect to dump the engraver to the graveyard. And then again, if they want to Nibiru here, perfectly fine. We have plenty of crackback. But let's say they don't Nibiru here. We will go the Requiem equip itself to the Lacrima. We will contact fuse into the Necro Equip Princess, and we will actually be, if we don't get Nibiru here, we will just go Cornfield Codal effect discard it for cost, add the Burfament now, and then we will go Necroquip Princess, draw a card, which is Foolish Burial. This is really good. We don't actually end up using this Foolish Burial for its actual effect. We use it as discard fodder in this hand later in the combo because we get all of the necessary pieces we need into the graveyard via our own other effects. From here, we will just kind of challenge the Nibiru. We will activate Chimera Fusion again, using its effect to fuse away the Burfament and the Nightmare Apprentice to summon out the Fusion Burfament. We will activate Fusion Burfamet's effect, Chain 1, Burfamet Engraves effect, target the Nightmare Apprentice, special out the Nightmare Apprentice, and dump the Diabolica off the Fusion. We'll go Chain 1, Nightmare Apprentice, Chain 2, Diabolica, targeting the Fiendsmith Engraver, add Engraver back to hand off Diabolica, and we will go Nightmare Apprentice, adding the Diabells. Finally, we will overlay the Burfamet and the Necroquip Princess for Caesar. So if they for some reason have been holding Nibiru this long, they no longer can Nibiru me. The goal here was that we didn't want to activate Engraver's effect because if we got hit with the Nibiru early, 
or before we got to Caesar, then we can still use Engraver's Effect Engrave to summon him and then link away the token Engraver to make Sequence to still try to establish some kind of board. The perks also is that because of the tangent we went down, we also got to the Diabells. And thanks to the fact that we are running the Abel Star in this deck at this point, we have wanted it in the graveyard. So we can summon Diabells from our hand now, which is fucking crazy we no longer have to summon it by reviving it from graveyard we can just special summon it because wanted is in one of the graveyards so at this point we have successfully played around target negation and we challenged nibiru to a point that if they had it and they chose not to use it they got punished for not using it but let's go ahead and see how far this combo can get us shall we so from here we will just special the diabells at this point i don't want to see any more target negation from an imperm but also we are looking to counter board breakers like evenly matched on our opponent's turn or even forbidden droplet so we just special out the diabells because we can we will then just discard the foolish for the black witch we will use black witch effect setting the deception we will then activate deception tributing away the black witch adding the sacred as amina and then we could go sacred as amina here just turbo out the silvera but we actually want some other cards in rotation first so we're gonna actually go sacred as amina tributing away the deception summon out the rusiolago rusiolago adding the debtors and then from here we will use engraver's effect discard for cost add the tract we will then use engraver's effect putting away the requiem for cost and then we will special him we will then link away the Rusiolago and the Engraver for the sequence. And then we will go Sacred Azamina, putting back the Rusiolago, adding it back to our hand because we will use it as discard fodder later in the turn. We will then use Sequence Effect and we will use Engraver, Gold, and the Lacrima to make our good friend Desiree. Gazelle, we'll then link to the Chimera and the sequence for the muckraker we will then use the sequence effect attaching itself to the desiree and we will use muckraker discard the sacred azamina for the burfamet we will use burfamet effect add a chimera fusion and a gazelle to our hand and i actually do misplay here we never actually added back the chimera fusion from our graveyard so consider the end board with an extra chimera fusion i just misplayed here it happens sometimes but we could add it back to our hand at any point in this turn because we haven't used that effect yet from here the end board is pretty much done we will just set one of the debtor and then we'll set two chimera fusion essentially and then we'll move to our end phase and then in end phase we get the end phase rip but also the deception will set itself because we sent it to the graveyard off of an azamina spell so that way we can reset it and use it to summon out the omni negate now here's the problem at this point and you probably are all calling me out in the comments our end board is full so that is honestly an issue our end board is full so we cannot just turbo out the omni negate but that is also not the end of the world we force our opponent to have to expend the desiree and the caesar and that's going to be really hard with die bells on the board they don't have a way to just activate evenly matched or imperm or droplet and if they set a card to bait out the die bells and i successfully you know take the bait and i pop just a random card and then they set dark ruler activate dark ruler we can chain chimera fusion fuse away the die bells and the burfamet and then in turn we can then chain the desiree negating the dark ruler no more so yes he does expend the desiree but in turn we are going to be opening up a slot because on the following chain we will be summoning out a Burfamet for fusion but then also we will be activating the uh azamina debtors to summon out the omni negate so we still have an omni negate on board we could also just save the Burfamet for uh guardian chimera we have the ability to make guardian chimera the issue is again we just we have an, a full end board that is my fault for making that but there is better ways to just manage the resources but overall playing around target negation and also challenging nibiru and still having this end board is insane if we got hit with nibiru earlier this end board would be a little weaker but not by much we would still be ending on a desiree we probably wouldn't have the azamina cards per se but at the same time we would have debtors and we would have deception set on end phase so we would still get to the omni negate on our opponent's turn we just wouldn't be ending on caesar but we'd be ending on desiree probably the diabells and we would have the omni negate on our opponent's turn so we still had a lot of gas going into our opponent's turn all right, so playing around the Furos, that is the biggest concern for every deck going into the upcoming format, 
And for Chimera as Amina Fiendsmith, it is really just hand dependent. The idea is to sub in as minimal cards as possible, but also summon out the hand rip Chimera. So that way, if they don't have to do any sort of discarding off of the Fuoros, you can still at least punish them by ripping a card out of their hand and it goes to the grave instead of returning to the deck. Thankfully with our hand, we are able to actually play into Fuoros a little bit. We end up giving our opponent, I believe, two draws off of it, but we will be ripping on end phase. Nothing in draw phase, of course, but we will in the main phase just discard the lure to special the apprentice. This is where, let's say, either in draw phase or now, they just fire the Furoros, right? We go chain one, Luri, because it's mandatory, chain two, Nightmare Apprentice. We will add the Cornfield Codal and special the Luri. We will not go Fiendsmith combo here because Fiendsmith combo minimum is going to give them an extra draw minimum, but realistically, it's probably going to give them like two to three draws and we're not looking to give our opponent a bajillion draws. We're looking to build the strongest minimalistic end board as possible at this point. So from here, we will fire the Cornfield Codal, add the Gazelle to our hand. Have not normal summoned yet, so we will normal summon the Gazelle. We have not given our opponent a draw yet. We will go Gazelle, add the Chimera Fusion. This is where we're going to give our opponent their first draw, meaning they will draw into a fifth card because... They have four cards in hand. We will go Chimera Fusion, fusing away the Luri and the Gazelle to make Chimera. Our opponent has five cards in hand. We will go Gazelle, Effect Chain 1, Chain 2, Chimera for End Phase Rip. Off of Gazelle, we will add the Diabells to our hand. We will then just fire Chimera Fusion, add it back to our hand just so we have it. And then we will activate the Deception, use the Deception's effect, tributing away the Nightmare Apprentice adding Sacred Azamina. We will give our opponent a second draw, giving them six cards in hand. We will go Azamina, eating away the Simple Spoils Deception for the Omni Negate Silvera. Again, six cards in hand at this point for our opponent. We will then just, because we have a Simple Spoils Engrave, special summon the Diabells from our hand, and then we will just set Droplet, set Eclipse, and set the Chimera Fusion, move to end phase, rip a card out of their hand so our opponent starts their turn with five cards in hand plus the draw in draw phase, and then we will set the Simple Spoils Deception. Not the craziest end board, but considering that we had to play under Fuoros, we only gave our opponent two draws, and we ripped one out of their hand. So essentially, our opponent is just starting their turn where they normally would have started it. They're starting with five cards in hand, and they draw one for turn, with one card in their graveyard hopefully not benefiting them. We are sitting pretty good. We have the ability to avoid being targeted by card effects because Kotal is engraved and we have Chimera on board. We have Diabells on board, so they can't just play any sort of board breakers right out the gate. They will have to set them first. If they have Imperm, Droplet, or Evenly Matched, they're just not going to be able to use them at all. They are dead cards unless they can out the Diabells. We do have Book of Eclipse for any sort of just trying to stop their turn in its tracks we have the silvera to stop any possible shenanigans they have to maybe out the diabells we do have that omni negate at our disposal but we also do have the forbidden droplet and we have chimera fusion if absolutely necessary but hopefully it won't be necessary but we could realistically fuse away the diabells and the chimera to hopefully dodge some sort of board breaker and then use chimera on resolution to revive the diabell so our opponent still has to play around her but that's really all I have for you guys today. Uh, Chimera as Amina Fiendsmith. It's a deck that I'm really looking forward to playing. I love Chimera. It is easily my favorite deck of all time, especially since the Fiendsmith cards have come out. The deck just plays so well. It has so many cool lines and ways to dodge around hand traps. It's realistically like the more like up-to-date branded, I think. It just is able to storm through a bunch of hand traps. It's able to punish you if you use too many hand traps. And yeah i'm really looking forward to this deck it is going to be slightly expensive because of deception and if i can get my hands on fool ross that's also expensive but i also want to thank you all for watching the video and the amazing amount of support on this channel at the rate we're going we will hit 2,000 subscribers before the end of the year which will be absolutely phenomenal so i do appreciate all of you for leaving likes commenting on the video and subscribing which is a perfect segue that if you enjoyed this video please leave a like on the video but also comment below your thoughts on fiendsmith as a music chimera going into the upcoming format whether you're you're going to play it whether you're dreading playing against it and also if you're not already and you like competitive Yu-Gi-Oh content or you just like chimera please be sure to subscribe to the channel so i can continue to make videos like this one but with that i'll see you all in the next video see ya